Praise the Lord. My name is Uma. Today I'm going to share with you as to how I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ from a Brahmin family background. I hail from Chennai. I was born and brought up in Chennai, India. Right now I'm speaking to you from the US. I was born as the last daughter among the four daughters from a very affluent Ayer family background. When I was a Hindu, I was such a staunch Brahmin. Every day I used to go to the temples and worship those idols. You can never see my head, forehead without the vermilion, saffron and the ashes that is the vibhuti and the kungamam which you call in Tamil. Every day I used to read the Kanda Sashti Kavasam which is the holy book for the Hindus. And the best part of it is we all studied in Christian schools and usually in Christian schools the Gideon's Association used to distribute these pocket Bibles to all the students. Now this Bible was very fascinating to me because it was so tiny it can fit into my pocket and every day I used to read the Psalms and the Proverbs just for the literary part of it, nothing else. I was also worshipping the idols at the same time. And I was surrounded with a lot of Christian friends who used to share the gospel to me and I never used to listen to them. I just used to take it in this year and leave it off in the other year because I was such a stubborn Brahmin Hindu in my faith. So, uh, I'm just stressing on this fact because no man can convert another man. Because most of them used to say that, you know, people brainwash you and make, a, make you as a Christian and things like that, but nothing at all. No human being can convert another human being because salvation is the Lord's. Only if the Lord chooses you, you will be changed. So it so happened in the year 1998 when I was doing my 12th standard. The school arranged for a scripture union camp and just for the fun part of it as an excursion trip, I planned to join them to Mahabalipuram. It was the third final day of the camp. A sister shared a small message in a prayer group from Isaiah chapter 44 that we cut wood from a tree and one part of the wood, we make an idol and we worship it. And the other part of the wood, we use it as firewood for cooking. So if you have brains, think and see. She pointed out specifically to me in front of the whole group, not knowing I was a Hindu. And she said, if you have brains, think and see. So I felt very bad and that night was sleepless. So out of a curiosity and out of a critical mind, I just opened up the Bible to know what it was. Was it real? Was it true? So after I went through, I got to know for the first time in my life that idol worshipping was a sin and the true living God hates idol worshipping. It's a sin. And the next thing I got to know is, you can call this God as my father, Abba father, my dad, Appa. I was calling the names of a thousand gods when I was a Hindu, but I never had a personal relationship like this, calling those gods as my father. I knew that this God wants to have a personal relationship with you. He loves to have a covenant with you. And above all, I got to know that we were born with sin and that only the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us from all sin and that is why the Lord died for us on the cross and he sacrificed himself for us to lead an eternal life with him even after our death so all this was news to me and above all an amazing thing happened which was a greater eye-opener to me that I can worship this God from any place, in any time, however I am, whether I'm clean or not physically. Because usually in Hindus, when the women are unclean on certain days, they're not allowed into the temples. They're not allowed to do any kind of spiritual things to those gods. So I thought the same thing with the Christian God because Islam also practices the same thing I suppose. Most of the women are not allowed into the mosques. But I knew that 
this God is not that way. He doesn't see your physical uncleanliness. He just wants your heart. You can enter the church any day and pray. You can pray from home. You can make your home a church. You can just talk to him anytime, anywhere. He does not want you to dip yourself into the Ganges River. He does not expect you to climb the Himalayan mountains to worship him. He does not expect your sacrifices, but just your heart, because he has already sacrificed himself for us. He came and he chose us. It was on that day that I knew this God and I accepted him as my personal savior. And I just left all my idol worshiping and all my rituals and religious practices and I became a Christian. And I wondered, why me, Lord? Why not all my other sisters who are much more better than me in everything? But why me, Lord? Why did you choose me out of the four? Then the Lord answered, it is always the least, the weaklings, the worthless that he chooses to put to shame the wise. He chooses the weak things of this world and he puts his strength in us for his name to be glorified. So I understood that he came in search of me. It is not me who went in search of him. So salvation is the Lord's, my friends. No man can convert another man. And that was not all, that was not the end. As I started reading the Bible, I allowed to go to the church, but persecution started along with it. I was prohibited to go to the church. I was not allowed to read the Bible. Most of the days, the terrace and the restrooms were my prayer rooms. But the Lord was 